So last week we talked about how to set up an on-screen display so that you can monitor all of your PC's statistics, you know, namely FPS, CPU usage, um, GPU usage, stuff like that. And that is all great and all, but you're gonna have to now know how to benchmark your system to make sure that everything is working as intended. Today, that is exactly what we're gonna be covering. How do you benchmark your system? And better yet, how do you do it for free? Now, you might be wondering why you need to benchmark your system, and it might sound kind of strange to you because, you know, all of your parts might be brand new, and you would imagine that they should work perfectly fine right out of the box, right? Well, what if you made a mistake? or you forgot to do something. Maybe you forgot to enable XMP. Maybe you forgot to install your chipset drivers. Or maybe you didn't install the CPU cooler correctly and your CPU is now thermal throttling. Or maybe you just plugged the HDMI cable into the motherboard's HDMI port instead of the HDMI port on your actual GPU. So you actually aren't utilizing the GPU's power at all. These are all examples of things I've seen my buddies go through when they built their first PCs. And actually that CPU cooler example has happened to me more times than I'd like to admit. Not intentionally, of course, but it happens. And that's why you need to benchmark your system to make sure everything is good to go and none of your components are acting funky or you have driver issues or whatever the case might be. Now, as always, everything I talk about today is going to be in the description box below. I'll have links to all the programs, everything I use, as well as my tutorial on how to set up your on-screen display for tracking your FPS system temperatures, usages, and so forth. Now, there are three things I want you to keep in mind before I get into the programs that I use to benchmark my systems. First off, always run the benchmarking programs as an administrator and always run the tests multiple times. You never know when you run a test and it's actually an outlier and the results aren't true to like what you should actually be getting. And running the tests multiple times, like three to five times, will help make sure that you have accurate results. Secondly, always make sure you stay consistent with settings in each program or game. This includes making sure anything you are comparing your results with are as consistent with your driver release and software version as possible. We wanna make sure we're actually comparing apples to apples rather than you know apples to oranges. And a lot can change between a driver and software version update. Finally, temperatures are super, super, super important when it comes to PCs, especially in regards to like the newer hardware due to boosting algorithms. For example, the Ryzen 3000 chips will boost higher or lower depending on how much thermal headroom the chips have. And so you can see better or worse performance depending on how hot your system is getting, especially if you end up hitting a point where your system's actually thermal throttling. So use a program like HW Info to keep track of all of your temperatures throughout benchmarking and also know your ambient temps. I cannot emphasize this enough. So with that all said, the first benchmark isn't really going to be a benchmark. It's a stress test, it's ADA 64. I like to use it to get an idea of where my maximum temperatures are going to fall under heavy load to ensure my cooler is working properly and ensure my CPU is not going to thermal throttle with my cooling solution. Many may not consider this a actual benchmark, but it's a benchmark in my eyes because without this information, the rest of these tests could be flawed and like inaccurate due to the poor system thermals. The second and I guess first real benchmark I like to use is going to be Cinebench R20. You can use Cinebench R15 as well if you would like, but I prefer Cinebench R20 since it's newer, it's more accurate at benchmarking higher core count CPUs, and it stresses your system a little bit more than the R15 does. In general though, Cinebench is a CPU benchmark, not a GPU benchmark, and it can be used to test both single and multi-core performance of your CPU. It's also widely adopted by the tech reviewer community, which means there's gonna be a ton of results online that you can compare yours with. The third benchmark I like to use is 3D Mark. Time Spy. I don't show 3D Mark Time Spy in my like build videos, but I like to use it to get a good idea of where my system falls compared to other similar systems. To get the full version, you're gonna have to pay for it, but they do allow you to download the basic version for free by going to the 3D Mark page on Steam and clicking the download demo version button. Anyway, the demo version has its limitations, um, but it will let you run the benchmark and see how your system checks out. Now, what I like most about 3D Mark Time Spy or 3D Mark in general is that it has a massive library of results. So you can actually run the test, then head over to the 3D Mark website and go to the test that you did. So like the um, Time Spy test with which you'd be doing and then pop in your CPU and GPU and then you can see the results others had with basically the same hardware as you. There might be different variances. You know, they may have overclocked their system. They may have not overclocked their system. They might have better cooling, this and that, but you can have a good idea of where your graphics card and your CPU lie compared to everybody else that has similar hardware to you. And of course, this gives you an idea if your system is performing as it should be. It also provides a single like graphical score as well as 
it's just a CPU score. So you'll get like an, a combined score, a CPU score, and then a GPU score. And so you can actually see if it's your um, GPU that's holding you back, your CPU holding you back or whatever. The final benchmark I like to use is, well, it's actually not just one program, it's just games in general. I like to use Capframe X to track average FPS, 1% lows and 0.1% lows, as well as both your CPU and GPU temperatures. I track other things as well, but those are like the main um, statistics I track through Capframe X when I'm playing and benchmarking games. I then use Capframe X's analysis page to dive into the results and see if there's anything that I should be alarmed about, such as like, you know, unexpected 1% or 0.1% lows or like super high CPU and GPU temperatures. If you are seeing random lag spikes in game, that could mean a lot of different things, but it could also mean that your CPU or GPU is thermal throttling at that point, so it has to pull back real quick and then your FPS tanks because of that. Now, for game results, also be sure to be using a variety of different kinds of games and try to stay away from unoptimized games like Fortnite and Warzone. Like I mentioned earlier, gaming results can differ greatly depending on the game version as well as the driver version used at the time of benchmarking. So take what you see from you know review videos or articles as a baseline for what you should be seeing with your hardware and keep in mind that there are chances your results could be drastically different even if you are using the exact same in-game settings. Now I get that this list is not an exhaustive list and there are tons of other programs that you could be using um, but these are the ones that I prefer and the ones I like to use and I like to recommend to others to use as well. Let me know what you guys use for benchmarking down in the comments below. Also be sure to hit that like button if you ended up enjoying this video or found it useful or whatever. The sub button if you want more content just like this and feel free to check out my other tutorials that I'll have on the screen probably popping up like right here um, right now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.